Up until this point, we have only covered DC circuits. DC meaning direct current. Now we will move on to start talking about AC circuits, meaning alternating current. So in this class so far, we've looked at voltages that stay constant and currents that also stay constant over amount of time. Now we will be looking at sinusoids, sinusoids. So the current and the voltage are going to vary up and down. So that's what we'll be covering in this chapter. So let's get started at looking at sinusoids. We will now start talking about sinusoids. Sinusoids. Right? And we usually talk about the sine function. The sine function, which is spelled like this, sine, but usually we abbreviate it to call it S-I-N, sine. Sine function. Okay, and the sine function, if we plot it, let's just plot And we're going to just plot the, um, let's just say V of T is equal to sine of T, sine of T. So we're going to put T here and then we're going to put V of T here. And the sine function looks something like this. Okay, and you've seen this before. And of this function, this function here, this maximum value, this maximum value is one. And this minimum value down here is negative one. So it goes from one to negative one, one to negative one. Now we can change this function. Let's say we change the function. And now we have V of T is equal to, let's say, V M sine of T. V M sine of T. Now, if we plot this function, the maximum and the minimum, this value here is going to be Vm, and the minimum value, let's just draw the full thing here, see if I can draw this, something like that. The minimum value is negative Vm. So this value, Vm, stretches it up and down, up and down. Okay. So what happens now if we have a function Vt is equal to Vm sine of 2t. So instead of t, we have 2t. Now what that means is we're going to get a function that looks like this. Okay? So it completes one cycle in half of the time that it takes this cycle. So this two here, the bigger this is, the faster it goes up and down, this two value. So this Vm value, oh, I didn't draw this totally correct, it's gonna go down here. 
So it, it goes to VM here. So this value, the VM, stretches it up and down. And this value here determines how fast up and down it goes. So we have a name here. We usually put a value of omega in here, omega. This term we call the amplitude, amplitude. This is the amplitude. And this omega, the Greek letter omega, Greek letter omega, is the angular frequency. So if omega is a big number, it goes up and down really fast. If omega is very small, you get a very slow up and down, okay? So we have values amplitude and angular frequency. Now let's take a look at, sometimes we plot these values like this. So on the x-axis, sometimes we plot omega t. So instead of t here, we plot omega t, omega t. And if we do that, we get Let me try to draw this. Oh. And this value here, in terms of omega t, that is pi, and this is 2 pi, and this is uh, 3 pi. And this here, that's pi over 2, pi over 2, and then 3 pi over 2. You get the idea. So if we plot omega t, this is the value we get. And another value, so omega here is the angular frequency. Um, another value we like to calculate is t. And t is equal to two pi over omega. And this is called the period, Oops, period. And the period is measured in seconds, usually seconds. It's amount of time. It's the amount of time to make one cycle. So from here to here, that is the period. So 2 pi divided by omega, right? The period here. Now when we have the sine function, if we plot that again, and this is omega times t, and let's say we have the function sine omega t. And this value here, we can say is the voltage with respect to time as a function of time. Right, so this is this function, and we know this is pi, and this is 2 pi, 3 pi. Now, this value starts from zero, that's zero here. But if we want, if the value is shifted one way or another, one way or another, we can do that in a, in a different way. Okay, so 
If we shift that value, let's grab a different color. Say we have this. Uh, something like this. Okay, so a function like this, and this function, v of t here, has the same amplitude, the same amplitude, so the same amplitude, and it has the same angular frequency, it is just shifted by amount of distance here. All right, and that shift is called the phase shift. And this is going to be equal sine of omega t plus phi. This is the Greek letter phi, and this is what we call the phase shift the sh phase shift so this distance is phi here so our amplitude is up and down it stretches this up and down the angular frequency is how fast it moves up and down and our phase shift shifts it left and right our phase shift will shift it left and right so we will write our equations, right? Our voltage as a function of time is equal to Vm, the amplitude, times sine omega t plus phi. Okay, so that is a way uh, to write a sinusoid. The, again, this is the amplitude. This is the angular frequency. This is the phase shift. Phase shift. And T is time. Time. And so these are all the components that make up a sinusoid function. Let's take a look at trigonometric identities. Trigonometric identities. Trigonometric identities. Trigonometric meaning like the sine, cosine, that's what trigonometric means. Identities meaning um, equality, equal identities. So we have things like sine of omega t it plus or minus, plus or minus 180 degrees is equal to negative sine omega t. Okay, so what does this mean? Well, if we draw a sine function like this, okay, and this is omega times t, okay, so if we take this value and this is at 90 degrees, if we add 180 degrees to it, that's 270 degrees, 90 degrees to 270 degrees. This value here is one, and this value here is negative one. So if we add or subtract 180 degrees, we get negative sine omega t. So the negative value of what this value is. So that is just one of the things we need to remember. But we also have this. We can do the same thing with cosine. 
cosine omega t plus or minus 180 degrees is equal to the negative cosine omega t. Okay. So that's another one. And now we can relate cosine and sine. So relating cosine and sine. So sine omega t plus or minus 90 degrees now is equal to plus or minus cosine omega t. So if we add 90 degrees, it's positive, positive cosine omega t. If we subtract 90 degrees, it is negative cosine omega t. And likewise, if we have cosine omega t plus or minus 90 degrees, that is going to be equal to minus plus sine omega t. So what's that mean? Well, if we add 90 degrees, so cosine, cosine omega t plus 90 degrees is equal plus minus, minus sine omega t. Okay, and then likewise, cosine omega t minus 90 degrees, minus is plus sine omega t. So we have all four of these relationships here, and these are trigonometric identities that we need to know to be able to solve these problems. One way we can remember these identities here is graphing. We can look at a graph and on the x-axis here, this is positive cosine omega t. Positive cosine omega t. Now positive downward here is positive, this is positive sine omega t, okay? So, and the angle between here, we can call theta. For example, so this is theta, and this is positive, positive, Positive is counterclockwise. Counterclockwise. So this direction is positive. So if we take a look at sine omega t, sine omega t plus 90 degrees, plus 90 degrees. So we would go rotate 90 degrees here, and that would be equal to positive cosine omega t. All right, so if theta here is 90 degrees, then that is, okay, so that is positive omega t. And that's exactly this identity here. Likewise, let's erase. Erase this. Let's say we have cosine omega t minus 90 degrees. So we're cosine omega t, and this is negative 90 degrees to here, and that is going to equal positive sine omega t. Okay. And that is the identity that we have here. Uh, cosine omega t or minus 90 degrees, cosine omega t minus 90 degrees, equals plus sine omega t. So that is here. So we can use this plot here 
to check the phase angles of these functions. Okay, let's do a simple example problem. So we have two voltages. We have V1 is equal to negative 10 cosine uh, omega t plus 50 degrees. 50 degrees. Um, and then we have V2 which is equal to 12 sine omega t minus 10 degrees, minus 10 degrees. Now what we want to know is uh, the phase angle, the phase angle between V1 and V2. So we want to know the phase angle between these two. And the second thing we want to find is which is leading. So for example, if we have sine here, and we can call this one. And then we have a second here that is and this is theta, right? We can say and let's label this two. We can say one is leading two by theta degrees. One is leading two by theta degrees. So that's what we want to do for this problem. So we want to figure out what theta is, the phase angle between V1 and V2, and which is leading, which one is leading the other. So let's take a look at that. So um, let's start out, I'm gonna delete this here so we can see what we're doing. So we have this function here. Um, and we can use our trigonometric identities that we know that cosine of omega t minus 180 degrees is equal to negative cosine omega t. Okay, so if we do that to V1 here, V1, we will have negative 10 cosine of omega t minus 180 degrees, or I'm sorry, minus plus 50 degrees, plus 50 degrees, minus 180 degrees is equal to 10 cosine omega t plus 50 minus 180 degrees. Okay, so see this negative sign is, so we just flip the sign, flip the sign there. So what we have here, is it is equal to 10 cosine omega t, 50 minus 180 is negative 130 degrees. Okay, 130 degrees. So that's for V1, V1 is equal to this, and V2 is sine, 
So let's transform that to cosine, to cosine. So we have 12 sine omega t minus 10 and then minus 90 degrees is equal to 12 cosine, 12 cosine omega t minus 10 minus 90 degrees. And I think that's right. And what we have here is that is equal to 12 cosine omega t minus 100 degrees. So that is V2. Now, if we take a look at our two values, we have 130 and 100 here. 130 and 100. So what we can say is V2 leads V1 by 30 degrees. V2 leads V1 by 30 degrees. Another way to say this is V1 lags, lags V2 by 30 degrees. So you can use the word leads, meaning ahead, in front of, and lags, meaning behind, behind. So leads and then lags. V2 leads V1 by 30 degrees, or, or V1 lags V2 by 30 degrees. Let's take a look at the graphical way to represent this. The graphical way. So I'm going to draw. And this is positive cosine omega t. And this is positive sine omega t. Now, if we take a look at our values here. We have V1 equals 10 cosine omega t minus 130 degrees. So from cosine, we go negative 130 degrees. So from cosine, we go negative, that's this direction, negative 130 degrees. So we rotate that direction and what we get is V1 here, V1 and the angle between here and here, that's 180. So this is 50 degrees, 50 degrees here. Okay. And now V2, we have minus 100 degrees from cosine. So minus 100 from positive cosine. So that is something like this. This is V2. And this angle, that is 100 degrees. And it's negative, negative. So we're going this direction is negative. So this angle here is 10 degrees. So the angle between these two, the angle between these two here, that is 30 degrees. That is our answer, 30 degrees. And what we see is V2, if we're calling 
this direction positive, V2 is leading V1 by 30 degrees. So it is ahead by 30 degrees. You can think of these rotating around. So V2 is leading V1 by 30 degrees and V1 is lagging behind by 30 degrees. We've now covered sinusoids and now we'll move on to cover phasers. So to cover phasers, phaser, so phaser. But before we cover phasers, we must have a good understanding of a complex number. A complex number. So for example, let's say we want to take the square root of negative 1. How do we do that? Well, we write this as a complex number j. Right? j is equal to the square root of 1. And that's really what we call, uh, this is the beginning of a complex number. And we know j squared is equal to negative 1. Okay? So we have this relationship. So a complex number has two parts to it, has two parts. It has a real part, real part, and those are one, two, three, four, five. You're familiar with real numbers. But it also has an imaginary part, imaginary. And this is the J part. This is the J part of it. Okay, so a complex number has a real and imaginary part to it. And we can write these complex numbers. Let's say the complex number Z is equal to X plus JY. All right, so this here is the real part and then this part is the imaginary imaginary part so real and imaginary now we can also write this same number if we want we can write it as z is equal to a certain r at an angle of phi. We can write these two different ways here. And what does this mean? Well, we have two axes here. Let's draw So this axis here is the real and this here is the imaginary. So if we write this like this, this is our number Z and its real part right here is X. That's the real part. And then the imaginary part is this that's j or y so we have the imaginary and the real but also if we use this form we can write it just as let's draw this axis again our, our z here this is a radius of r this r stands for radius so if we think about a circle, right, this is the radius of a circle. So we have the same thing, a radius here, 
And this angle is phi. So we can write this two different ways. These are equal. We can either write it with a radius and an angle, or we can write it as x and y. We can now look at Euler's identity. So Euler's identity. Identity. And what Euler's identity says is e to the j times phi. This is the complex or imaginary number. So j here, remember j is equal to the square root of negative one. This here is equal to cosine phi plus j sine phi. Okay, so that we have this relationship here. And in addition to that, in addition, we have e to the negative j times phi. That is equal to cosine phi minus j sine phi. Okay, so we have this. And oftentimes, we can say things like, we only want the, this is the real, real, same with this, this is the real, and this is the imaginary. I'm just gonna write IM for imaginary, and this is IM. So if we do something like this, if we say we want the real, this means real, part of e to the j phi, that is just going to be only, so this here, this part means only the real part, only the real part. So that, this is going to equal cosine phi. Now, if we write something like the imaginary part of e to the negative j phi, right? And this is our equation here for negative. This means just the imaginary part. So just the imaginary part. And what this would come out to be is this is equal to negative, uh, neg uh, negative sine v. Okay. So we have the real part and the imaginary part. So let's go on and say we have a voltage v of t is equal to vm cosine omega t plus phi. We have this expression here. This can be written equal. This is equal to the real part of vm times e to the j omega t plus phi. So these two are equal because vm e j omega t plus phi is equal to vm times this term here, and that term comes out to be cosine omega t plus phi plus j sine omega t plus phi. Okay, 
but this here means we only want this portion of it. We only want the real part. So these are equal. These are equal here. So let's take a look at operations. Operations. And with these operations, we will take a look at two complex numbers, Z1 equals X, uh, X1 plus J, Y1. And Z2 is equal to X2 plus J, Y2. Right, so we have these two complex numbers. Complex numbers. So if we add Z1 plus Z2, we add those together, that's going to be X1 plus X2 plus the complex or the imaginary part, J, Y1 plus Y2. So if we need to add add two complex numbers together. This is how we do it. And likewise, subtraction, Z1 minus Z2 is equal to X1 minus X2 plus J Y1 minus Y2. Okay, so we can add or subtract those. Now, what if we want to multiply? multiply so z1 z1 times z2 and that is going to be equal now we can write these as our radii r1 times r2 at an angle of phi1 plus phi2 okay so remember that these can be represented as vectors, as vectors. And let's say we have, this is Z1. And so this would be X1 and, and X2, or I'm sorry, Y1, Y1 here and here, but also we can write this as a vector that is R at an angle of phi, R at an angle of phi. So by multiplying, we take R1 times R2, the magnitude, this magnitude, multiply those together, and then we add the phases together. We add the phases together. Now for division, division, if we take Z1 divided by Z2, that is going to be equal to R1 divided by R2. And instead of adding these together, we have phi1 minus phi2. So this is multiplication, division. Um, and I think these are the main important ones, but we could also go one over Z1 is equal to one over R1 at an angle of negative phi, phi1, okay? The square root, the square root of Z1, square root of Z1, is the square root of r1 and that is at an angle of phi1 divided by 2. Okay, so and then lastly let's take a look at 1 over j is equal to negative j. So this is an important one. 1 over j is equal to negative j for the complex numbers. For the complex numbers. So let's take a look at a situation where we have 
let's just say this here, and this is some sort of sinusoid, sinusoid here, and we have VT is equal to the real part, we want the real part of this V E J omega T. Okay, so this is the voltage curve here. We can actually plot right next to it. See if I can draw this. Oop. And here we can have our real axis and our imaginary axis. And what this will look like here, if this is at t equals t naught, this here, if this is t, this is t naught. T naught. So these two correspond with each other. So you can think of this rotating around in a circle. So this rotates, this phaser as it goes up and down, up and down. So we, let's take a look at an example. So as you can see, the real part is here and the imaginary part is to the left. And we see these phasers rotating around. And so these represent the, the curves, and this is our real and imaginary axis over here. And we can adjust this. We want to go back, forth. Okay, we can change different things on here. Um, but yeah, this is the phasor diagram for the sinusoids. So the phasor diagram for these sinusoids. Let's take a look at transforming some equations into phasors. So for example, if we have the equation I is equal to six cosine 50 T minus 40 degrees, amps, these are amps here, and let's transform this into a phasor. So by doing that, we take the magnitude and the phase angle here, and what we get is I is equal to six at an angle of negative 40 degrees. Okay, so that one was pretty easy, pretty easy. Now let's take a more complex example where we have V is equal to negative four sine 30T plus 50 degrees. Okay. So the first step here is we need to transform this into cosine. We need to transform this into cosine. And to do that, and we have a negative sign out here, a negative sign. So we know that the negative sign of a value A is equal to the cosine of that same value A plus 90 degrees. So this is one of the relationships we have. So by transforming this sine into a cosine, what we end up getting is uh, V is equal to four, cos four cosine 30T, plus 90, uh, plus 50 degrees, plus 90 degrees. So we have this. 
and we can simplify that is 4 cosine 30 t 50 plus 90 is 140 degrees and this here we can then uh, write as our phasor our v is equal to 4 at an angle here of 140 degrees so that is the the written as a phasor for the voltage here so we need to start representing our time domain over here this is with time right this has omega and t this in the phasor domain is equal to this this is the phasor domain so at an angle of phi and then likewise so cosine is just with phi here if it is sine it is phi minus 90 phi minus 90 there and here we have cosine with theta and then sine here with theta is theta minus 90. so in the in this relationship we also have these two if we take a derivative with respect to time we can just multiply it by j times w or o, j times omega and then also for the integral here in the phasor domain it is just if we integrate with respect to d uh, v then we just have v over j omega here so these two here um, these are two things that we need to remember as we go on with these problems now we'll look at phasor relationships for circuits so phasors for circuits circuit elements phasors for circuit elements so elements such as the resistor capacitor inductor all of those so let's first start out with the resistor resistor and remember that we have the resistor here something like this and this is r and this is i and we know let's say i i is equal to this value i m cosine let me write this cosine of omega t plus phi right so this is a sinusoid sinusoid now if if the current is this we know that the voltage is i times r so the voltage the voltage here is going to be equal to just r times i m cosine omega t plus phi okay so we have the voltage here and we can write that as a phasor if we want that is just equal to the voltage equals r times i right r times i or this can be written as r uh, times i m at an angle of phi okay. so we can write it that way now let's take a look at the inductor the inductor so the inductor and we have the inductor l and the current here i is still the same the current is still i m cosine omega t plus phi okay so this is the current and we know the voltage across an inductor is equal to l times di dt well di dt di dt if we take the derivative of this 
that is going to be the derivative of this is negative sine. So that's negative omega i m sine omega t plus phi, I believe. Am I missing anything? Okay. So the voltage, the voltage here, the voltage across the inductor is going to be equal to negative omega L times I M sine omega T plus B. So this is the voltage across the inductor. Now we do know that, uh, that negative sine of a value of A is equal to cosine of A plus 90 degrees. So we can transform this sine here into cosine. So we have V is equal to omega L I M cosine omega T plus V plus 90 degrees, plus 90 degrees. Now, if we want to write that, we can just say V is then equal to omega L times I M at an angle, phasor angle of V plus 90 degrees. Okay, so what this shows is the voltage, the voltage here is out of phase with the current. So the voltage is out of phase, out of phase with current. Right, let's move that over. The voltage is out of phase with the current because we have this plus 90 degrees here. So the, the current, let's write this. The current lags the voltage by 90 degrees. So if we were to draw a diagram of this, let's draw a diagram. And we have our real part here and our imaginary part here we have a situation where we have the current, this is the current, and this here is the voltage, okay? and this is 90 degrees. This is 90 degrees here. So the current, if we're rotating this way with our angular uh, frequency, omega, and this is rotating around and around, the current lags the voltage by 90 degrees. So the current is 90 degrees behind it is behind the voltage. So current lags the voltage by 90 degrees. So let's take a look at a capacitor. A capacitor here. And we have the capacitor and we can call this I and we have some voltage V across the capacitor, the voltage. Now let's assume that the voltage is equal to Vm 
cosine omega t plus some value phi there. So if we do that, we want, we know the current is equal to C dV dt. And if you remember dV dt in the phaser, in the phaser is equal to J times omega times V. J omega times V. So we can put this in here and we have I is equal to J omega C times V. Okay. And we also know that the V then is equal to this I divided by J omega C. So what this means is if we draw a diagram here and we have the real and imaginary axis and let's draw what we have in this case is this is our current and this is our voltage here and this is a 90 degree angle so about this diagram if we have omega here this is rotating around and around we have the current lags current lags voltage by 90 degrees or we could say the voltage leads leads current by 90 degrees so this is the relationship and this is the opposite of what we had for the inductor so just to sum everything up here let's take a look we have our element a resistor an inductor or a capacitor and we have in our time domain, these are all the equations that we've been used to. But in the frequency domain, the frequency domain, meaning this real and imaginary, right? We have this relationship here, where the voltage and current here are in phase but here the voltage and the current are out of phase so uh, out of phase for the current and the voltage so we've now examined the relationship between voltage and current in the frequency to the domain and this is for a resistor and this is for an inductor. And this one is for a capacitor. Now we must investigate something called impedance. Impedance, which we write as the letter Z. Z is impedance. And it is the ratio, meaning the ratio of the voltage with the current. So impedance is equal to V divided by I. Okay. So for a resistor, for a resistor, Z is equal here just to R. And for a inductor, 
inductor inductor z for an inductor v over i so we move that to the other side is j omega times l and lastly for a capacitor the impedance for a compa capacitor um, is one divided by j omega times c so these are the impedances for each of the uh, the components so when we do impedance if we have let's say a voltage source here and we have z1 and we have z2 z1 z2 we can add these together the equivalent impedance is equal to z1 plus z2 and in the same manner if they are in parallel if these two are in parallel we have z1 and z2 the equivalent impedance is equal to 1 over z1 plus 1 over z2 so these add together like resistances so we can add the impedance together here 